I'm gonna turn that dice roll into my very own hard magic system, just to show you that creating a completely original system isn't as difficult as you might think. In the end, you'll be the judge and tell me if you think if it's actually unique or not. Here's what we have to work with as inspiration. And I immediately know what I can start with. The lightning. Shooting lightning is a cool power, but it's not something new, we've seen it time and time again. People usually call it electric manipulation or electrokinesis. How can I make it feel unique or original? First, let's focus on creating the underlying principles of how the magic works. I'm going for a hard magic system here, so I'm going to do what Brandon Sanderson does in his books and I'm going to treat it like a science. Ok, I spent some time learning how and why lightning occurs. Let me see if I can explain this correctly. In a thunderstorm, winds push ice crystals and super cold water droplets around. When these particles hit each other, they end up with a positive or a negative charge. The lighter, positively charged ice crystals move to the upper part of the cloud, while the heavier, negatively charged particles sink to the lower part. As this separation continues, the upper and lower parts of the cloud accumulate opposite charges. This creates a strong electric field between the different regions of the cloud and between the cloud and the ground. When the electric field becomes strong enough, it ionizes the air, creating a conductive path. The actual lightning bolt occurs when the built-up electric charges connect through the ionized path, neutralizing the separation. This process releases a tremendous amount of energy, producing the visible lightning flash and the accompanying thunder. I think I'm onto something here. What if instead of simply shooting electricity, the magic users could create a positive and a negative electric charge, which will create an electric field between them, ionize the air, and then lightning will strike as a result of it. And how could these electric charges be created? Well, by moving electrons around. The magic users in this magic system won't simply shoot electricity, their power will actually be to move electrons. So let's say my magic mage wants to shoot lightning at a target. He will move some electrons from himself to the target. He will now be left with more protons than electrons, which will result in a positive charge within himself. And his target will have more electrons than protons, which will result in a negative charge. If the fields are strong enough, lightning will naturally occur. Ok, so I made the underlying principles of the magic system a bit more original and unique, but the end result is still just shooting lightning. It's time to add some limitations. Limitations are greater than powers, this is Anderson's second law of magic. It states that the restrictions and boundaries of the magic system are more important than the powers and abilities it grants. So by adding some limitations to the magic system, we can make it more unique. The first limitation I'm going to add is that the lightning mages aren't immune to lightning. And I'm doing this for several reasons. One, their power is not shooting lightning, it's moving electrons around. The lightning is just a byproduct of it. So I like the fact that they can be heard by their own magic. And two, if they are immune to lightning and can't be heard by it, no fight scenes with this magic system will be interesting. If your opponent is immune to lightning, why would you shoot lightning at them? It wouldn't hurt them. I'm gonna take the second limitation from the dice roll. This wand. Since the lightning mages can actually be hurt by lightning, they can't shoot it directly. They'll have to use some object that they can shoot it from. But I don't like the idea of them shooting lightning from a wand, so I'm going to change it to a staff. So the limitation would be that lightning mages have to use a staff to actually shoot lightning. And to protect themselves from the lightning as much as possible, their staffs will have to be longer, like at least 3 meters long, so that there is some separation between the lightning and themselves. I like that visual, I don't think I've seen wizards with massive staffs in fantasy before. So that's another way that I'm making this magic system unique. And basically, instead of moving electrons from themselves to create the electric charge within themselves, the magic will move electrons from the staff, create the charge at the tip and shoot the lightning from there. The third limitation will be power. Since I'm taking inspiration from Brandon Sanderson here, his magic systems are almost always powered by a resource that the magic consumes and the users have to keep track of. In the Cosmere, that's Investiture. 
So I want my lightning mages to have a consumable resource that they need in order to power their magic and that they can run out of, so they have to be careful. My first idea was to have the mages be able to convert kinetic energy into energy that they can use for moving electrons. But that seems like a separate power that the mages would have and I don't want to introduce another power to the system. In my research, I came across piezoelectric crystals. Turns out that certain crystals, like quartz, generate an electric charge when subjected to mechanical stress. So mages will have to have such crystals embedded into their staffs. Hitting the staff on the ground will generate electric charges inside the crystals, which the mages can then use to start moving the electrons towards their target, creating the electric field which will eventually result in lightning. And these crystals will be damaged over time, so the mages will have to replace them if they want to keep using their powers. This can also lead to a cool scene where a mage runs out of crystals, so he creates some static electricity around his staff in order to power the move of the electrons. The fourth limitation will have to be done. I think I don't want the mages to be able to constantly shoot lightning around, so they will need time to move enough electrons around before an electric field is strong enough to generate lightning. The fifth limitation is about rage. I want to divide the lightning mages into two groups. One will be able to move a large number of electrons quickly, creating a really strong electric field which will result in a stronger lightning strike. But their range will be really short. I'll come back to this group a bit later in the video. And the second group will be less powerful, their lightning strikes will be less damaging than those of the first group, but they will have much greater range. The sixth limitation is gonna be about the movement of the electrons. I don't like the idea of the electrons just flying around, so let's have the mages connect their staff to the ground. That way, the electrons have to move through a medium, which is the ground, but maybe other mediums can be used as well. And the seventh and final limitation is about the direction of the flow of electrons. I will divide the mages into two more groups. One group will push the electrons away from their staffs, creating a positive charge in their staff and a negative charge in their target. And the second group will pull on the electrons, moving them towards the tip of their staffs, creating a negative charge in their staff and a positive charge in their target. These differences in the fields will result in different types of lightning strikes. This is what actually happens in real life. There are two types of lightning strikes, positive cloud to ground lightning and negative cloud to ground lightning. Without going into scientific details which I barely understand, the positive lightning is generally more powerful, but it doesn't branch out, and the negative lightning is less powerful, but it branches out and also flickers. To keep things relatively simple in the magic system, the charge in the tip of the mage's staff will determine the type of lightning strike that will form. If the magic pushes electrons away and the tip of his staff has a positive charge, positive lightning will form. The lightning strike will be stronger, but the area of effect will be smaller. And if the mage pulls electrons towards him, the tip of his staff will have a negative charge, which will result in a negative lightning strike. The strike will be a bit less powerful, but it will branch out and affect a greater area. Don't worry, I'll explain everything in a second. Let's bring all of this together. Brandon Sanderson usually creates these cool charts that explain his magic systems, and I'm gonna do the same. Here it is. The inside circle represents the lightning mages who are more powerful, but have much shorter range. The outside circle represents the mages who are a bit less powerful, but have much greater range. The left side of the circle represents the mages who can push on electrons, resulting in a powerful non-branching lightning bolt, while the right side of the circle represents the mages who pull on electrons, resulting in a branching lightning bolt with a greater area of effect. Let me give you some examples. We have our lightning mage here. Let's call him, I don't know, Tom. Tom has the power to move electrons, which results in him shooting lightning. Tom has his wizard staff, which is big, has a ball at the top and crystals embedded into it. When Tom is walking with the staff, hitting it on the ground, he is constantly creating an electric charge within the crystals. When he wants to shoot lightning, he uses the electric charge from the crystals as a power source to start pushing on electrons. He connects his staff with the ground and starts pushing electrons from the tip of his staff towards his target. That creates a positive electric charge in his staff and a negative one at his target. It takes a few moments, but when the electric field is strong enough, a positive lightning appears, shooting from the tip of his staff towards his target. After a few shots, the crystals in his staff are damaged and he has to replace them with new ones, so he always has a few extra crystals with him. 
Anna is similar to Tom, but she pulls on electrons instead of pushing. That means that the lightning that shoots from her staff branches out, affecting a larger area around the target. And that's the basis of the magic system. Now let's talk about cool uses. Brenda Sanderson's third law of magic says, expand what you already have before you add something new. So let's expand on the basis. I want to talk about these guys for a second, the ones who have short range. They can be damaged by the lightning, so it doesn't really make sense for them to shooting around, not when they can hurt themselves. So instead of wizard staffs, I'm going to give them swords with crystals in their base and an armor made out of non-conductive materials, such as rubber or porcelain. They will be lightning knights. Since their range is short, they will create electric charges within their swords, resulting in lightning strikes between the bases and the tip of their swords. I basically just create lightsabers, but with a twist. The ones who can create a non-branching lightning can place it on the edge of their swords, allowing them to cut through almost anything. And the ones who can create a branching lightning can jump among a lot of enemies and damage them all with a single strike. I think these different types of magic users can lead to a lot of cool characters and awesome scenes, but I'm not stopping there. Since it takes a few moments for the electric charge to build up, the mage can maybe stick his staff in the ground, start the process and move away to distract or fight his enemies a different way before the lightning comes down. I guess this can lead to a lot of different battle tactics being developed. Speaking of tactics, imagine a lightning mage using arrows instead of a staff. Imagine he has arrows with crystals embedded into them. He'll stab them in the ground and start the process of moving Electra. Right when the charge is strong enough, he'll shoot the arrow from his bow near his target, resulting in a lightning strike between the arrow and the target. This way, the mage will be really far away and in no danger himself. Imagine on a big battlefield, instead of standing on the top of a castle shooting down lightning from his staff, he would be hidden among the archers, shooting lightning arrows among the enemies, and the enemies wouldn't even know where the lightning strikes are coming from. What about defense? How would someone protect himself from an attack from a lightning mage? Well, one way would be to carry metal spikes. Once they notice a mage is targeting them with a lightning strike, they can use the time it takes for the charge to build up to stick a few spikes in the ground at different points around them, hoping that the strike will be attracted to one of the spikes and not them themselves directly. Large structures can be protected with non-conductive materials, preventing the flow of electrons and the mages targeting them. I want to take a second and talk about the world where such a magic system would exist. I think this magic system would really be at home at sort of a steampunk setting. Since the mages would be working with moving electrons and electric charges, they are sure to discover electricity and magnetism and start developing cool but kinda weird tech. The mages would be pretty important for the industry that will develop and the piezoelectric crystals and the non-conductive materials would be a big part of the economy. And over time, the development of the tech can change the mages themselves, like they can replace the crystals in their staffs with batteries, or they can create extending staffs which go out high in the sky shooting lightning from high above, keeping the mages safe. I could go on for hours and get really in depth in magnetism, maglev, flying mages, etc. But I'm gonna stop here, this video is long enough as is. All in all, I think I have the beginnings of something cool here. But now it's your turn to judge. What do you think? Do you think this is an original and unique magic system in the world? Have you seen something similar somewhere? Do you think Sanderson's method of adding limitations creates a unique magic system? Please tell me in the comments below. And consider subscribing.